Hello everyone, welcome to our Busbridge and Hamilton online heritage service based on the Book of Common Prayer. Just a couple of church notices to say we're really looking forward to the youth service unplugged tonight at 6.30 available on Zoom. We've got the youth band playing, we've got a drama and Anto, our youth worker, is bringing a message to us. That's at 6.30 tonight. And also just to say that on Thursday it's Ascension Day and to celebrate we've got a reflection at 7.30 uh, followed by a Churches Together service at 8.30 again available through Zoom. Please do check out the website, uh, the regular updates there as to what's going on in the life of the church and do join us each day uh, Monday to Friday 9 o'clock to 9.30 for morning prayer. You're most welcome to join us again all details available on the website. We're going to start with our opening hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. It's a great pleasure to be able to welcome you to this, our Matins service. Um, we're going to start with the usual opening sentences. We normally stand for this, but of course, wherever you are, you may wish to stand or sit, do whatever you think is appropriate for you and your circumstances. So we start with the opening sentences. When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness, that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Enter not into the judgment with thy servant, O Lord, for in thy sight 
shall no man living be justified. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands to set forth his most worthy praise, to, bear, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Therefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. We say together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways. We have, we like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises. Declare unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and have given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolve all them that truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that these things may please him, which we do at this present, and that the rest of our lives hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. So let's say the Venite together. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corns of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you'll hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's say the Jubilate together. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Would you join with me in saying the Creed together? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And call it for peace. 
O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We call it for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that in all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that which is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the Queen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings and Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee, thy favour, to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in health and wealth long to live, Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us to this day. Thank you that despite all the huge changes in our lives and the uncertainties that we face, you do not change. Your love and your plans for our lives do not change. Your faithfulness and your love are forever the same. And so we come to you with confidence, bringing our needs and the needs of the world to you in our prayers. Father God, we would want to pray first of all for all those who are suffering as a result of COVID-19. We pray for those who are unwell, for those who are dying and for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for the elderly in care homes unable to see their families and friends and for those who are lonely or frightened in isolation. We pray for those who are anxious about losing their jobs and their incomes. We pray for those who are feeling trapped in unhappy homes. And for those just longing for love. Father, please bring your comfort and strength in these difficult times. Lord, as we pray for those in need, we pray also for all those who are working in our hospitals and in our care homes. May they get the protection that they require and grant them the energy and resilience and encouragement in their work. We ask your special blessing on their families, often coping without them. Father God, you call us to pray for our leaders who especially need your wisdom and courage as they make decisions on our behalf. We pray that they too may be encouraged and strengthened. Lord God, we recognise that the whole world is being shaken up by the spread of this virus. And so today we pray for the leaders of the nations. Give them wisdom and compassion and enable them to work together to find ways to support their citizens through this world-changing crisis. Most of all, dear Lord, we ask that men and women everywhere may turn to you. And may we as your church be diligent in sharing the hope that you've given us in your Son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for our young people. And we do ask your special blessing on them 
as they cope with the confusing changes in their lives. May they be encouraged in their studies and in the contact they have with friends online. And may they know that you can work all things together for their good. We pray especially for all teachers as they seek to support their pupils and as they make plans for when the children can return to their schools. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our friends and neighbours. Help us to put our trust in your unfailing love and to seek to follow you day by day. May we know your comfort and strength and grow in our faith as we know your faithfulness to us in all the ups and downs and struggles of our lives. Thank you for your presence, for your peace and your steadfast love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Romans 5, 1-5 Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. I'd love to ask you to imagine that each one of us is a story and that we have a story which we are writing every day of our lives. And as your story is being written, it is connecting with my story, like the casting of a shadow, because we're, we're connected, we're together. We are all created by God for connected stories, for those stories to be connected with God and with one another. And that means that how we live our story has power because it is how our character shines for others or as Paul calls it, uh, glory in suffering and the glory of hope. Your story has the power, the power to strip people of joy and leave them feeling as if they're somehow in a basement. And yet the same story, simply with a different perspective, an unchanged story, but with God's perspective, can also raise people. Raise people to understand a place of glory and of joy and of freedom. Almost, almost like being on, on an open, windy balcony and able to peer through the haze towards the sea. Isn't that what you and I seek? But it isn't what we can do ourselves in our own strength. How we see our story of life is about the power of God to work his Holy Spirit in us as followers of Christ. And this is where Paul ends up in that passage. When we have access to God, his opening part of the passage, verse 1, through Christ, because we've responded in faith, Paul tells us it changes both our story and how we see our story. Because we are connected to the glory, the glory of God. We are either open and willing for that glory to be reflected through us or we're a closed story and we try to live it our own way. And this is what Paul calls character. So let's look at how, how, how God shapes our character. Firstly, it's about allowing God to reclaim who we are when we're under pressure, but also who we are in all of who we are. This is where Paul has come from in chapters one to four, outlining the uh, reclaiming of God and the invitation to respond to him. Of course, character shows under pressure uh, and we are under pressure now. Perhaps you're somebody that's uh, going back to work and you're wondering, will you have a job in six months? In terms of education, I'm thinking of Mr. Catchpole, our incredible head at Busbridge Junior School uh, and all head teachers working out how will children return to school and, and flourish? Perhaps you're thinking, well, when my child goes back, how will they learn? 
Abraham Lincoln once said of character, character is like a tree and reputation is like its shadow. Well, our reputation or what people recount of our story often shows what people consider our character as Christ followers is like. And so that, that means with uh, being reclaimed by Christ, we have a responsibility in who we are, a responsibility in the shadow that we cast. Now, it, it may be that you're thinking, oh, the shadow I've been casting is pretty dark right now, and that is real life. Well, that shadow can be changed because the glory of God brings light to the shadow if we turn to God and pray into it. Or as Paul says, character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame. God will not put us to shame as we turn to him and seek his change and his help to take us to that place of the balcony. How does this happen? How does our story cast a shadow of hope? Well, Paul tells us that our character is forged by the refining fire of the Holy Spirit. It's about a Christian character of hope summarised by Paul as being because of the Christian Trinity. He, do you notice in those verses we've got the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit in there? All interrelating, all in community, all in the same story. And Paul puts what this means, or what do I do about it, into practical terms. It's about glory and suffering, real suffering, and boasting in the glory of hope, real hope. So firstly, it's about allowing God to reclaim who you are. Uh, secondly, it's reclaiming an attitude that stuff happens. Paul is a realist. The, the idea of suffering at being okay may seem ridiculous, but James echoes this in James 1, 2 to 3. So for James, it's endurance, and for Paul, he uses the word perseverance. And the word Paul uses for suffering is not simply about persecution. It simply stuff happens. It's where you are in your story right now. The word used for it is a, is a little bit like a, a pressure cooker. Now I'm a very aware I did not have pressure cookers back then. So just bear with me on this one. But my parents used to have one and I remember how you drop something pretty raw and ragged into it. And yet it would come out as this most incredible thing. The pressure refined it and did amazing things and created a sweet aroma. But Paul is meaning to get us to ask ourselves a question. What are you learning about yourself and your faith through the inner response to the pressure? So it's not necessarily what's happening around us so much as the suffering response within us. It's where it points us. It's where it takes us beyond ourselves. There's one story that I love in the cinema, The Dark Knight rises, you'll know it as Batman. And in it, there's a character called Miranda, Miranda Tate. And Miranda says, suffering builds character. It could be lifted right out of Paul's writing. Suffering builds character. And within us, as we respond to that suffering and persevere, the spirit of God is at work. It's recognizing that God is at work, drawing our attention to the glory of God. And so what we are learning about ourselves is that our character is to persevere and not give up. How do we do that? Well, I remember talking to a military commander saying, the, the unique thing about the military is we don't walk away when things get tough. We walk forward to resolve them. And so I'd like to ask you, what are the things that perhaps you're not resolving? Where are the places you need to step forward and not back? And invite the Lord to work through you in them and work through them in you as you are refined by the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, it's about reclaiming a corner for the glory of God in your story. The, the other day, I think it was last Thursday, uh, I met a family who were out walking and it seems that what happened was the wife had sent the entire family, quite a large family out, so that she could, as they said, walk around the house alone and reclaim the spaces she was used to having to herself. I quite like that, reclaiming the spaces she was used to having to herself. Uh, we all need space to reclaim who we are, 
And the best space you can have is to begin the day with God's word, to find a corner where you can curl up and read, reflect and pray. It, it might be five minutes. It's about stepping into the glory of God within the stuff happening because you have returned to God and you find you, you are working your faith through it. I've been helped myself in this with the story of John Mark Comer. He's written a great book, which I'd recommend. It, it, it's quite a long title, but it starts the ruthless elimination of hurry. And that says it all. It's the story of reclaiming your purpose in the glory of being God's created being. It's powerful. The ruthless elimination of hurry. And this, this is all agreed with by psychological studies. Uh, there is a field of study called post-traumatic growth. Now, for many people, when they have learnt to deal with a profound trauma, often through walking alongside others in community, they experience often what two researchers called Tedeschi and Calhoun have termed positive life change. Positive life change. And some of the signs of this might interest you. Uh, renewed inner strength greater appreciation of small things that used to be taken for granted, more satisfying relationships. It seems to me it's a bit of a response to COVID-19. And one of the most common changes is a spiritual attitude to life due to deeper level awareness, or what uh, another researcher has termed spiritual integration. Paul knows all about spiritual integration. He writes in 58 AD, roughly, four years after the Christians of Rome have been evicted from Rome, and though he may not know it, four years before he himself will be martyred for his faith. And he calls it glory and suffering and glory and hope, and it is thoroughly integrated. It is about the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer, pouring healing love into the hearts of those who have faith in Christ's resurrection. I just wonder whether it is possible that in our locality, across Godalming, uh, into the local villages, through Hambledon, we are developing a deeper level awareness. That there is a story of spiritual integration, a shadow of faith, a balcony being sought. The story is beginning to stir deep in people's souls and the collective sigh of our community and in our churches that we are beginning to look beyond self and to us, to being together, to looking to God. Uh, and I, I sense that God has a renewed story for us and it is not going to be exactly the same story as yesterday. It will give us a new perspective on what was and take us into the future. And so fourthly, it's about reclaiming a character that propels us into living in community. Yeah, we Christians, we, we're all about community. Or so we say we are. But perhaps we'd lost that for a bit in our lives. Perhaps church had become what I had gained, almost just a little bit parochial. But uh, what we're discovering is that it's about what we give to one another. It's about small acts of giving that bring people's lives into the balcony. In the midst of the chapter of our lives, when we're trapped in a feeling of basement, and yet somehow we know that God understands our suffering and he helps us to persevere through. And that is broader than me and my church or me and my faith. Let me, let me take you to Batman again, if I may. Batman himself says, a hero can be anyone, even a man doing something as simple and reassuring as putting a coat around a young boy's shoulders to let him know that the world hasn't ended. We all need someone to put a coat around our shoulders sometimes, and maybe you're the person to put a coat around someone else's shoulders, figuratively speaking, to help others to the balcony. It reminds us that we are planted to be people of the balcony in the midst of suffering, but also planted with heaven in our hearts. Paul says that uh, it's about we. It's the second time he starts using we in, in Romans. In Galatians 6, 2, he says, bear each other's burdens. But let me, let me let you into a secret. It's not a hard secret. 
To have burdens shared, you need to let know, people know that you have a burden. You can sit in a corner and read your Bible. You can curl up in your garden space or your uh, house space and you can pray. But we are also called to tell people how we are. Uh, and honesty is a risk. But Paul is saying it's about persevering through. It's very practical, but very personal. To turn to a loved one, that's why I've got the word love here next to me. To send a text, to send a WhatsApp. I'm struggling with this right now. I was talking to a supermarket delivery person the other day and asking about how it was going for them and how he, how he was finding it. And he said, he said, I'm doing it for the people who when I knock on their door, they cry because they haven't seen anybody. Oh, that, um, that got me a bit. Now, I don't know if he was particularly religious, but I said, oh, look, can I, can I say a little prayer for you? And can I pray for the people you go and uh, um, deliver to? And he was really open for that. I just prayed. You see, he's, he's delivering humanity. He's delivering connected story. He's delivering the glorious love of God. And his humanity is touching their humanity. His story is joined uh, with their story. And I wonder where you are in your story, because you have confidence in your access to God. Where are you in, in your story? Because you know you have peace with God. You are at peace with God. And where are you in your story? Because you know that you are invited, as Paul says, to stand before God. What shadow does your character cast? How can you develop these things? Well, here's just a few. We've looked at allowing God to reclaim who you are, every part of who you are. Reclaim accepting that stuff happens. It's real life. It doesn't make it right, but life happens. Uh, reclaim a corner for the glory of God in your situation as you take that corner to pray, read and reflect. Find your space for the glory of God to fit with your day. And for me, that's about removing hurry. And reclaim living in community, looking beyond you or I to we and us, and sharing our burdens and seeking other people's burdens to support them. This is the story of character that is founded on hope. With this character, you will make a difference.
Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting them in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those for whom you pray, now and for evermore. Amen.